Regular viewers will know I'm a great fan of Lima diesels. The basic models are very good, but a few simple modifications can make them look and run much better. Previously I have worked on a number of the later models, but this is a very early one, so maybe a tougher task. I only paid £34 including postage for this one, so if it doesn't turn out well I won't have lost much money. But if it does, well, we shall find out by the end of part two. One problem common to all Lima diesels is the lack of electrical pickups. This can lead to problems of hesitancy and stalling on uneven track and insole frog points. This is particularly annoying if, like me, your track work is not the best and you enjoy slow running. However, it is a simple job to add extra pickups. Like all Lima diesels, the Class 33 has traction tyres on one side that do not pick up current from the track. The other side of the motor bogey does pick up current from the track. The unpowered bogey picks up current from the opposite side to the motor bogey so that altogether the model picks up current on four wheels. It is a simple job to add extra pickups to the unpowered bogey which will improve performance no end. The first step is to glue a small piece of phosphor bronze strip to the underside of the bogey. I used epoxy resin to glue it on. Once this is set, a pickup wire of about half a millimetre diameter is bent to shape and soldered to the phosphor bronze strip. It is shaped so that the ends bear lightly on the backs of the wheels. A length of ordinary baseboard wire is then soldered to the strip and taken up through the chassis. It is glued to the bogey so that it does not come loose or foul the wheels. A cutout is made in the chassis to allow the wire to pass through. The hole should be large enough to enable the bogey to turn freely on your sharpest curves. My sharpest curves are radius 1 but if yours are of a larger radius then the hole can be made smaller than this. In any case, it won't be seen, so I don't think it really matters. The other end of this wire is then soldered to the motor bogey and the chassis tested to make sure it works. This does of course mean that the unpowered bogey can no longer be quickly removed from the chassis, but it can, should it be necessary, by simply unsoldering the new wire. The rewired chassis on test on my layout. Although it is running very slowly, there is no hesitancy or stalling over one of my insole frog points. I think the extra pickups are working just fine. I don't know if you can see it in this shot, but when I look back over some of the previous shots I noticed that the traction tyres look a little thin, and also they do not seem to be central on the wheel rims. This may account for the fact that the loco wobbles a little when running quite fast under load. So I have decided to replace them and see if that improves matters. I have ordered a pack of traction tyres from Peter's Spares, but as I have not changed any traction tyres before, this could be rather interesting. 
Apparently the easiest way to replace the tyres is first of all to remove the bogey from the frames and the chassis. Unscrew the two screws there and there on the bogey frame and remove it from underneath. The bogey can now be popped out from the frames. The old traction tyres are simply removed using a small screwdriver. As can be seen, they came off very easily. Perhaps too easily. The old traction tyres look a little thin, distorted, out of shape and one is not as wide as the other. This may account for the lumpy running mentioned earlier. So let's get on and replace them. The first one is seems to be on but it's not quite straight at the back some gentle nudging with the screwdriver and the new tyre looks as if it is totally parallel with the wheel. Okay so let's now fit the second one. It does seem to stretch rather more than I would have liked and I think this one at the moment is a bit twisted Again, some gentle nudging with the screwdriver to get it into the correct place. And we're done. The bogey is placed back in the chassis and the bottom plate replaced. Well, that wasn't too bad for saying that I'd never done that before. Looks quite a success to me. The new traction tyres in place on the bogey. They look a lot better than the old ones, more parallel and not as distorted. The close-up view still shows a few lumps and bumps. Maybe they will disappear when running on the layout. We shall see. Whilst the chassis was separated from the body, it was treated to my usual dirtying routine. The underframes, bogies, couplings and wheels were all painted in my favourite underframe brown. And the springs and axle boxes picked out in a dark grey to represent oil staining. The buffer beams, which had previously been painted red, were also dirtied. On the model as bought, the glazing strip helps hold the large chassis weight in place. As I intend flush glazing the body, the strip will no longer be used and the weight will be loose. I therefore glued it to the chassis using two-part epoxy resin. Let's hope it holds. That's all for this video. See you next time when we will look at improving the appearance of the body.